What's up, everybody? Welcome back to a new episode of Just Create. I'm your host, Thomas Duran, uh, founder and owner of TD Films. Man, it is great to be back. I know it's been too too long. It's been too long uh, uh, between the uh, since last episode, and and I definitely apologize about that. Um, you know, unforeseen circumstances. It just uh, seems to always kind of get in the way. But we don't make excuses. We continue to kind of push through and, and get some uh, and create and just create, right? So uh, this year I have some amazing guests lined up that uh, I'm very excited to bring into you guys. Um, and and normally at this time of the show, I, I usually bring in a, on my monologue, usually bring in some knowledge drop about how to use video for your business, um, what video does for your business, uh, you know, a lot of different great uh, tips and tricks uh, for you know, creating video, but, uh, for today, I just am really super excited about the guest that I brought on. It's about a 50 minute interview. And and I'm telling you the, the interview and the message that he provides is extremely powerful and it really is a must watch. So it is something that I encourage you guys just to sit back, relax, and uh, soak in all the information that uh, that this guest provides. His name is Luke Brady. He calls himself the, uh, his name, his uh, his title is called attention artist, and you'll find out what that exactly means. But uh, and also, who knows? There might be some magic. It really is a powerful show. So um, when we come back, we'll get right to uh, introducing you to Luke Brady. So stay tuned. Come on back. Welcome back. I'm really excited about uh, uh, the next guest that's joining us. Uh, it's a longtime friend, and uh, but really, it's it's his message and what he does really fits in with with what I'm trying to create here with Just Create. Um, obviously, you know, it's all about the mindset. How, why, by just creating something and getting artistic and, and tapping into that creative mindset, it really allows us to uh, move forward on things if there's depression or if there is, you know, if we're struggling with things. And, and so this guy, his name is Luke Brady, and uh, this guy is goes even more deeper than that, and but I just feel like I want to bring him on and have him talk to you guys. So first of all, Luke, thank you for coming, and I appreciate you being here, man. I'm excited. Oh, I, I'm so happy to be here. Thank you for the invite, um, and it's great to catch up with you. Oh, yeah, definitely. I know it's been so, – so truth be told – it's been 10, it's been almost 10, 11 years. Cause that's so yeah, I, something like that. Yeah. I left, I don't know if you remember, but I left ABC 15, like pretty much a little bit after I had my daughter and my daughter okay, is yeah. almost 10 years old now. So it's, it's about that. Oh, point. that's right. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Cause I remember you were talking about cribs and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And uh, yeah, not, not the MTV the show. Dad but, yeah, yeah. The dad life. I tell you. <laughs> I wish I was doing that. That would have been, oh my God, things haven't changed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so anyway, um, I, for, for people to know who you are, you're, you're known as a, as an attention artist. And, yeah. and so tell me a little, tell, or tell us a little bit about what that means and what that consists of. Yeah. Um, well actually back when I lived in Phoenix, there was, um, the ignite Phoenix, um, it's kind of like the yeah. TED talk type of things. Yeah. And I went to one and someone bailed out the day of, and the person who filled their spot were these, um, n this neurologist guy from banner health. And he had a book that just came out called sleight of mind. And I've been doing magic since I was a kid. I saw David Copperfield in first grade and has been always intrigued with it. And this guy talked about his book, how he followed magicians around to teach people about neuroscience and how the brain works. And I'm like, what a great idea. And I was fascinated by this guy's talk, went out, bought the book. And 
I, that's one of the few books I have the physical book, the ebook and the audio book. Like, and I'm not really a book. I wasn't a book guy at the time. So to me, that was like over the top, but I loved the stuff that was in it. They talk about some magic tricks and, but how they work and how our mind gets tripped up with stuff. And then I've always been fascinated with hypnosis and have been doing that for about, it's almost been about, I would say a little over 10 years. So right around the time we worked together is when I was kind of getting interested in that because okay. doing magic, but I was like, dude, hypnotists get paid a hell of a lot more. So I kind of got it. And, and it's fascinating to me. Like, is it real? You know, you see it on TV, you see it in stages in Vegas and all that. And you're like, it can't be real. And so I got into hypnosis and then eventually I left the TV business and joined my friend in Orange County who started Orange County Hypnosis. And my whole business plan moving to California was just do hypnosis. Like that's such a shady business wow. plan, but, but that's, <laughs> I knew if I uprooted my life and totally changed it, sold everything in Arizona, moved out to California, there's no way I could turn back and I have to give it everything I have. And I've always been kind of a guy who stays in the comfort zone up until then. So I knew if I didn't do something drastic, I would either stay in TV or kind of be miserable. And I didn't really know a whole lot about mindsets at the time, but moving out to California was one of the best things I could have done. Scariest things, but one of the best things I could have done because okay. since then being an entrepreneur, I went as a hypnotherapist and I did a lot of the stop smoking, weight loss, those kind of things. And then after helping people with that for a while, I was like, if they could quit smoking in an hour or two, what else are they capable of? Like, why are they stopping there? Like, how else can we better our life? And then I got into this wave of um, self-development books and bettering myself and being the best version of myself. And so that just kind of led me from hypnotherapy into coaching. Um, and I've always been doing magic on the side and, and corporate gigs and all that kind of stuff. But the reason that book kind of plays a role, that sleight of mind book, is that um, the guy in the book says that magicians are um, artists of attention and awareness. And I thought that was like the coolest term. Kind of long, wow. a little long for business card, but yeah. like that's really what you're doing. And then I just kind of shortened it to attention artist because to me in the past year, I've realized whether it's a story, whether it's a metaphor, whether you're coaching, you're doing a magical moment, it's a book, a movie, it's directing our attention in a way. And usually when we're in a negative mindset, that's all we can see. That's the filter in which we see the world is it's just crap or it's just totally negative. So to me, magic does the same thing, misdirection does it, but also changing our mindset and changing our attitudes it's where we put our attention. So that's, it's all shifting our attention. What steals our attention? Like if it's Facebook during the day or whatever, <laughs> or if it's like a good book, catching up with a friend, that kind of stuff, listening to a good podcast, whatever it is, is driving our attention. Like attention is the currency of the mind. So if we can get a handle like on that, that. I like that. Yeah. I like that. If, if we can get a handle on where our attention is going, that gives us so much more control in our life. So that's kind of how I got, so I'm combining magic moments with coaching, with all that kind of stuff. And I just go by attention artists. And another reason I like it is to be totally honest, it's vague. So when you are at a networking event and you're talking to someone and they say, what do you do? And I'm like, oh, I'm an attention artist. Like, what is that? What is that? Yeah. That's an excuse to give a story or give them an experience or something right there, as opposed to, I mean, nothing against like lawyers, but like you're a lawyer. Oh, okay. okay. He's, like I get it. Yeah. Uh, uh, that kind of thing. I'm out. So yeah. Yeah. So it doesn't put you in a box for them. And if they go, Oh, he's a magician, then I can do conversational hypnosis or I can kind of shift around to different modalities. So it gives me a sense of freedom within that. Um, so it really wasn't anything offered on career day per se, but to me, it like, it, it gives me the chance to kind of move around and whatever that person or group needs. I can't, if they think of me, if they think of me as a magician, great. If they think of me as a hypnotist, that's fine too. If they think of me as a coach, that's fine. Like awesome. whatever it is, it, it kind of fits in that bubble. Man, this is, this is amazing. Cause you, you really hit it at so many different levels and points that I really want to dive into. And if we, and if we don't <laughs> get to all of them, I'd love to have you back and, and we talk some more because the entrepreneurial oh, yeah. mindset that you have, the, the, the your story of just like you were at you were working for your job for 11 years and the fact that you just yeah. got up 
sold everything and left to do what you're passionate about, have no plan really to, other than then know that you're going to do a hypnosis, yeah. right? Like that's, that's, that's looking scary. back on my, that was kind of, that, that was a lot. I didn't yeah. real. I, it was kind of like, you get that sense of I'm bigger than where I'm at. Like there's more potential. There's something, I don't know what that is, but there's something bigger than where I'm at. And if I don't act on that feeling, I'll be in my head too long. And and honestly, um, I don't know if anyone from ABC 15 is listening to this. I kind of look back and I've grown so much over the past three and a half years. I kind of just like, I don't hate who I was back then, but it was just so different. Like in, in the news, it's kind of a negative yeah, yeah. mentality yeah. and that wears on you. And you don't know until you get out of your situation. What what's out there. Yeah, exactly. And that's the same thing that like with myself, you kind of mentioned, it's like, if I don't do this, like it got to a point for myself, it's like, if I don't do this now, then when? And totally, yeah, it, it, and it actually, it scared, it scared me because I didn't want to be continuing doing what I do, was doing before for the longest time. I'm like, no, I can't do that. And so that yeah. scared me more than actually making that leap and and doing it yeah right and so pretty 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 amazing but uh i love to to tap in uh your your creativity and and how you use those different um avenues of of creative like your 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 art your um your 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 magic your hypnosis Mm -hmm. um and how you use that to leverage or how you leverage those for in the corporate world and the uh working on one-on-one but tapping into that that mindset or helping people tap into that mindset so to, like how do you leverage that kind of stuff and and what does it allow them to do to kind of like you said see it's almost like the matrix see things completely different yeah well, I was lucky enough, my mentor in hypnosis, uh, Igor Ledohovsky, who runs the Hypnosis Training Academy, um, took me under his wing for years. And I mean, we still work together, but he um, he taught me to look for the principles and things. And I didn't really realize it at the time, but the principles are, are you know, kind of like the, the more most fundamental things. So what that trained me to do and i didn't realize this for a couple of years is it got to the point where how can i'll look at photography and be like man how i'm you know you look at a couple of years ago i was at horseshoe bend and i'm like i want to take pictures like the amazing pictures you see of like all the perspective and i mean granted i don't have any special lenses or anything yeah. <laughs> but you see how people interpret and you know that you're in the exact same spot physically of where they were which uh, Horseshoe Bend is like right on the edge. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Literally. But, uh, yeah. I, and, well, I was a few feet back because I kind of have a problem with heights. But um, uh, but I'm like, I want to, they see, a photographer will see the world in a certain way. And that's what all artists do. That's why we see movies and why movies are different than books or even reading someone's autobiography. You're getting a different perspective than your own. And ultimately, that's what coaching is. That's what hypnotherapy is. That's what, it's shifting you out of, the filter in which you see the world and it can get you into a different way to see it. So that's why I'm fascinated by drawings and artwork because you're seeing a moment in time through the artist's perception. And that just fascinates me. And I think that's usually so when powerful. we're stuck in our, we're, when we're stuck in our heads, we just need a different perspective. So magic coaching, artwork, all that stuff gives us that. We're just not always aware that that's why we kind of go to it. Um, there's a guy named Michael Neal. For the longest time, I thought his name was Mike O'Neill, but it's Michael, N-E-I-L-L. And he has a book called The Inside Out Revolution. And it's all about mo- how all of our problems are really just our thinking. Wow. And, and how it, powerful and it, that is. I mean, oh, oh, it was great. And and it's one of my favorite books. I reread it a couple times a year. It's real short. Like even the audio book's like two hours. Um, but it's, it's great because it... It's one of those books that just kind of washes over you. Like you don't have to think while you're reading it, but things are sinking in to where you realize all of our problems are just our thinking. And when you get into that modality of just our problems aren't real, it kind of dawned on me that all of our problems are just illusions. It's not the problem. 
it's the thinking around the problem, the resistance to the problem, that's the problem. And so when it kind of dawned on me, and then I heard it from a couple of different perspectives, our problems are illusions. I'm like, great. How could I take magic and change the way people think by using magic moments to shift their attention? Um, and that's kind of how it got into it. When I found out that our problems are just illusions, then I was like, oh my God, I, like that just opened my world up. It was like totally different, a different way to see the world. Because whether, and going to the entrepreneurial stuff, yeah, the mindsets of being an entrepreneur, it's like a roller coaster. I mean, there's days you're like, oh, I'm on fire. And then there's other days you're like, why did I even leave my job? And there's just these, you know, last summer, um, <laughs> I went through this really like deep depression, but for some reason I felt like, I need to kind of sit through it. I've always tried to fight it. And the one thing I haven't done is just kind of let it go. So I sat with it for a couple of days. Like I just cleared my calendar and just kind of sat around. And then it just kind of cleared my head to where I realized that was kind of the idea. Actually, it was like the middle of last summer in 2017. That's where I kind of got the idea of magic is the metaphor for how we think. Wow. Because when you get, when you see a magic, it just like hit me one day. I was like, when you see a magic trick and you see something happen and you know, like you see David Copperfield cut himself in half, like, and walk around with the lower half. I don't know if he still does this trick, but he walks around like the lower half of his body. You're not thinking about your bills, your, your appointment. You're like, what is that? Yeah. exactly. And so it, it makes you super present and that's what comedy does. That's what magic does. That's what a good conversation with a family member or friend does. It makes you super present and it connects us with ourselves. So usually I think when we're stuck in our heads, when we have all these problems, it is that we're stuck in our head and magic is a way to get us out of our heads. So, so it's, that's, that's, that was a, that was a load full right there. That was amazing. <laughs> that was extremely powerful. I, I tend to go on rants. Sorry. Yeah, no, I love it. Like I, that, that, that even, even as someone that, that has always thought, that way um mm -hmm. not 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 necessarily in the magic but 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 that they're changing the perspectives and and understanding that you know you're sort of creating your your own reality right like by the way you yeah. think and uh but the the way that you have articulated that is extremely powerful and uh that, that's you. that's just just tremendous so so I, you know, you're on your one-on-one -on -one coaching. How do you show, like, do you show them the magic? Like, like how, how does the magic work in within, within your, your everyday coaching or, or working with corporations that, like you do and they help them change yeah. their mindset? Yeah. So, so if I do like a group talk, um, it's interesting. If I do a lot of stuff with corporations, I do have a background in magician, in, in magician, magician, um, in magic. Uh, <laughs> yeah, magician, I guess yeah. that's, I guess that's a term now. Is, is that a new um, one? Uh, yeah. They've updated it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, you're about to be magician. Um, uh, so they don't know. And that's another thing is I go by attention artist. Cause again, nobody really knows what that is. So I'll create a magical moment. That's not so much about me because I like doing stuff with the audience. I think there's a lot of magicians and I give a lot of slack for this, but I think a lot of magicians are very ego driven and they have this presence of, I can do this and you can't, they'll do cool cuts with the cards. They'll do a lot of stuff. But if you sit there and go, well, if I did five years in prison, I could learn that sleight of hand stuff too. Like, you know, like it's, <laughs> if I put the time in, it's nothing magical. It's just, you put the time in where if you create an experience, and one, if you don't say you're a magician and you create a magical experience for someone, that's going to be far more powerful. So nowadays I make my magic more about the, the spectators or the people. So if I go into a company and do a talk, they don't really know that I'm a magician. Um, but I'll do something with a Rubik's cube where they, the sides, they mix them up. Two people mix up cubes, but then at the end they end up matching on each of the six sides. That's like one in 43 quintillion. Yeah possible outcomes like what are the odds of that so that's a magic moment and i didn't like do sleight of hand to do it so it makes it about the people and their mindsets to open up to that so i'll use magic as a metaphor actually the, probably the best thing to do is just show you something yeah um, I, I love that i love it yeah because with coaching 
it's not always about magic tricks because if they get an insight about something, that's a magic moment in their head. Magic doesn't happen in my hands. It happens in the mind of the spectators. And when you realize that the magic happens in the mind of the spectators, that's when you can shift your modalities to see something that they've never seen before. Um, you know, create something in a conversation, like maybe even just a stillness to where their thoughts clear. And they're like, Oh, I don't know what I'm worried about. That can be a magic moment for them too. Love so it. it doesn't have to be like sleight of hand, a deck of cards or anything like that. But, um, so here, let's see here. <laughs> um, yeah, I might just stand up. I know this yeah. is kind of weird, but okay. No, no, so I totally did an OJ and took a knife and stabbed this deck of cards. Um, and you can see that I just poked a hole. I've got so many random decks. I get them at Costco. Um, so I bolt. just put a little That's smart. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm that bored and Netflix was that boring. So, you know, you can just kind of nothing crazy, but here's the interesting thing. Um, actually, I'll just kind of pull it through this way. Um, what's, what's crazy about this is that you're kind of suspending your disbelief. You're not, you know, I mean, it's, you have a lot of assumptions about this, but the interesting thing is that. Yeah. What? You... <laughs> it's a completely oh my God. solid steel block. Yeah. Yeah. So it... <laughs> <laughs> that old chest. I hate being leave speechless, but or left speechless, but uh, damn. <laughs> like, yeah. the... So that's so so like in a coaching moment, um, one of the things I, I actually do with that trick is I can set up set it up a couple different ways. But one of them is how quickly we are to jump to conclusions. So oh, wow. if we create that space where we're not jumping to conclusions, how would our lives be different? That. That is, I, I, I think every single one of us, we do that. And, and the fact that, you know, just even, I mean, I do it all. I mean, someone could just be walking down the street and I'd be looking at someone and I can already kind of sort of conclude or make assumptions about who that person is, what type of person is good or bad. I'm not, you know, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Mean, it's just, you just automatically assume or have a certain expectation of of a certain individual or a certain experience or a certain uh you know even with food oh this this place still looks like a dive but I'm yeah i'm a little weary but you know sometimes those are the best places to eat right totally yep you know so um that to be able to change that perspective of I, that's got to take a lot of work. It's like, like, like how, how does someone would continue to be mindful and understanding that, that way of thinking of like before jumping to conclusions or before judging a book by its cover, you know, yeah. like, like how does someone, especially with like in business, entrepreneurial, uh, my, you know, because right, you're going after certain clients, you're going after certain people, you meet a lot of different people. Like I, when, when I go to networking, sometimes I assume some of these people that I'm networking with are not necessarily my clientele. I could tell yeah. right off the bat, but I could be a completely wrong, you know? And so it's just, how, how do you continue to that, 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 that training of your mind of like, of of being open to that new, that different perception or. Yeah. Well, it's, it is kind of like an ongoing training thing. And one of the things I realized is um, <laughs> it's funny. I was talking to a friend about this. I might actually start collecting ideas of this to make a book out of um, you've heard it here at first um, <laughs> where Breaking I hang around with, a, I hang around with a lot of magicians. I go to the magic castle in Hollywood a lot. Um, and I, I, but being around magicians, they ask different quality of questions. And to me, uh, I think it's Dr. John D. Martini who says, 
our quality of life is directly proportional to the quality of questions that we ask. And I remember hearing that going, oh my God, wow. is it like, that's so profound. Is it? And then of course I had a bunch of questions like, yeah. is that all there is? Like, you know, <laughs> so it's, <laughs> so that question sparked a ton of questions. So it's interesting because when you see a magic trick or you see a magician do a magical moment, you see David Blaine do something, you're already looking for the the solution, right? You're looking for all these answers in your mind and you're doing it in a positive way, like a, a solutions-based mindset. And we do the same thing when we do crossword puzzles, when we do jigsaw puzzles, we're trying to solve a problem, but we're in a, like a good attitude about it. So one of the things that really got me when I first became an entrepreneur is I would get into a negative mindset and, and our brain is like Google. So if you ask it a question, it's going to come up with the answer. So women might go, I don't know why I date all these jerks. Oh, well, here's your, you know, 52,000 mm -hmm. solutions or, or reasons why. And then, but if you say, where can I find the right person to date? It'll come up with a bunch of, so it's the quality of questions that we ask. So hanging around magicians, they ask different questions. And to me, that's what kind of is like an ongoing training and, and also hanging out with hypnotists too. Um, and, and it, we've had we we're all capable of this so it's not yeah. that i claim to have any special powers or anything like that but i had a conversation with someone about a year and a half ago i think this lady who she worked for the family business something in pharmaceutical sales and she's like it was like right before thanksgiving um so not quite a year and a half ago but um she had to do a big sale before thanksgiving before she left the country for two weeks like on a family vacation and in less than 10 minutes with a couple of questions, I cracked her world wide open. And we were like at Dave and Buster's. I didn't even really think much of it. Oh, wow. But for her, it was profound mm -hmm. because she was, she's like, I, you know, I, I, ha I need to find more clients like this or like this or, you know, whatever. I'm like, so, okay, you're looking there. Where haven't you looked for clients? Because obviously she's looking yeah. at one spot That's, and they're not there. Yeah. So, so to me, the obvious thing is where are you not looking? Yeah. So yeah, so I'm like, so where aren't you looking for clients or something to that effect? She's like, like, oh yeah. She's like, well, I haven't looked here and here. I'm like, okay. So about your clients that you've had in the past, like the good things that you found in them, you know, where can you find that specifically and where you want to target? And then after like three or four questions, it got to the point where she said, I need to just ask my previous clients to do to to offer them something new she didn't have to go anywhere else oh she was gosh. thinking they were out there somewhere so really the magical there. moment was yeah and then the next morning she didn't tell me this i'm kind of like alarmed that she didn't tell me she <laughs> texted she texted a mutual friend of ours she made a hundred and twenty six thousand dollars sale the next morning with a previous client for something so she just knocked it out of the park the next day and so for her her attention was on outside where can she find new clients and i just shifted it to where it wasn't where it was inside and so wherever they're looking and they're stuck i just take them somewhere else it's like misdirection i just send them somewhere else and as an entrepreneur we tend to get in those negative pits a lot and that's all we see so we just need to go somewhere else i i love that and then you being such a I, I, I'm a I'm a little jealous how how not jealous but 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 impressed and just really in an awe the uh, the different spectrum and the, how much talent you have in your artistry Thank you. in Thank your you. photography. Obviously, you've done video. We worked in the news together, and so um, you know, for me, like my creative my creative outlet has always been in video. You know, and mm -hmm. so. And, and, and so when I kind of came up with this show, it was, it was, I'm like, I, even when I was coming up with the name, I just want to be like, I just, I just feel like if we, if people just create, like it provides an action, it provides a calling, it provides us to do something with our mind and with, you know, with actual, you know, physically doing something, you know, and it could yeah. be in the form of, uh, you know, writing or, or painting or, sculpting or whatever the case may be whatever that outlet is man. and so i always find that you know i think a lot of times people get in these ruts but it's the 
constant pushing us to create something that's going to allow us to get out of those ruts right away. And it changes that mindset um, of thinking that we're creating this or thinking that there's so much negativity around us, you know, especially in today's age. Yeah. People are just angry. People are just, you know, depressed over something that's not really affecting them. You know, they're just coming up yeah. with these scenarios and you're just like, all right, so how does that how is that affecting you when you wake up in the morning? Like, you know, like like is someone yeah. actually at your door beating you? No, it's a <laughs> you know, and yeah. so you know, I always thought by getting that message out of of just create because I really do believe that we're all creative. We're, we're we just yeah. being able to tap into that mind. And I think uh or in inside that brain or that was it the right side of the brain being able to tap yeah. into that. I know it's more difficult than others, but everyone has that the capability of doing it. And that's what you're kind of saying is that magic uh the the uh the idea of looking through the perception is that or a different way of thinking everyone has that ability yes. in them. Yep. You just help facilitate that. And so um I I just I how do you see being creative? I mean, do, I mean, what's your kind of take on, on that? I mean, obviously, it, like w when you coach with your people, do you see corporations and see like different businesses needing that creativity in order to continue to do their more of their their administrative type roles or think, you know, accounting, things like that? Like, how do you how do you encourage them to be that creative mind? Yeah. And, and I totally agree with you where I believe everyone is creative. It's just, there's things that kind of make us feel that we're not kind of like yeah. the glorification of lives on social media. It's like, no one is like <laughs> that great of a life that it's like portrayed on social media. Um, as they're sitting in their pajamas, like putting up a picture from two days ago. Um, well, I think our creativity is like a muscle and, and the more we flex it, the more we do it. Um, for me, actually, it started with it. I'm, I'm working on like stupid. I do a lot of drawings and I've got like nine that I'm working on. And I'm like, I need to just finish one. Like they're all kind of <laughs> going at like, I'm like, we've been working on them for months. Typical. And one of the things like last summer, um, I was in kind of like a well financial dip for a little while. And so I stayed home a lot. And it turns out I had a trend of doing audio books while I was working on drawings. So I do a lot of self-development audio books. Because if I listen to the audiobook, it makes me slightly less judgmental about the drawing and how accurate it has to be. Yet I'm doing something else, so I'm not totally in on the audiobook. So it's kind of like just going into my unconscious. So it's kind of a, a good split. Um, so, so to me, that was kind of like a driving force. And I'm like, that flow state, people get in and out of that all the time. So with companies, they tend to just notice when they're not in it. Or they notice the, the extremes. They notice when they're totally in it, and they notice when they're totally not in it. They don't realize how they get in and out of it. So, and really, the, I think the biggest thing that pulls people out of creativity and takes them out of a creative flow state is a sense of self-judgment. And that's why I kind of like the title of, of it, Just Create, because just one kind of get over yourself and just do it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I've actually got a list of ideas for a YouTube channel. I wanted to actually start yesterday, but I need, so like, it's funny that you bring it because I being in TV, I'm super judgmental about how all these things. And I'm like, no one's going to look at that. If you're creating <laughs> magic right in front of them, like they're not going to care about the background and all that stuff. No. So, um, so even myself, it's like, great. How do I get over this? Or how will I know when I get over that? Um, a lot of the questions I ask myself are from my background in hypnotherapy, where if they come to you with a problem, how do they know when they're in it? How do they know when they're out of it? How will they know when they're past it? So you kind of want to get guidelines of it. So if, if a company is saying like, we're not creative. Okay. So how do you know that you're not creative? And they'll usually like, how do you know that yeah. it's the negative, whatever. And then at that point they'll be like, oh, it's this and this. Great. So now go away from that. So if it's like, well, I'm not, you know, say, um, well, with you, you do a lot of storytelling, right? Yeah, like yeah. the videos you make, you do a ton of storytelling. So like, say I, I come to you and say, you know, how do you know when you're not being creative? And you say, well, I'm not creating stories. Okay, great. Yeah. 
So how can you create more stories? Like it, it, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's just like, Oh wait, there's, there's other places to find stories. Have you, I mean, there's so many avenues you can go with, with, you know, finding a story. And, and I mean, that's yeah. how movies are created. I mean, they, they literally, they take, they could take a line or a, Something that we didn't even know as viewers was a big, significant uh, part in the movie, but then they they could you could just take that one specific part and then blow it up to be a sequel, you know, or blow it up to. The, I mean, that's yeah. what they did with the little Dory. I mean, I know, I, I, I Disney, but I, I'm not too familiar with that. But like, look yeah. at Star Wars. Now you've got like a Han Solo yes. movie. You've got. Um, you know, the interstitial ones like Rogue One and you've got like I actually love that storyline. That 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 was a that, I thought they as a one of my favorite Star Wars movies. I mean, the fact that they took the timing where they put that and they, they took one little rebel unit that was mentioned in like in Star War uh, the the very first Star Wars, which was episode oh, yeah. four from Obi Wan that that none of us really like like, okay, whatever. It never really a main part, but they took that one line and they made a whole movie out of it and focused on that group. And it was just, it, yeah, it's, that, it's stuff that like that fit, that fit in the middle of six movies technically. Yeah. And it pieced it together. Like that's, that's a magical moment to, to create a hero's journey within two other stories. Like that's awesome. Like yeah. that's thinking differently. And um, I think that's kind of what it all kind of comes down to is what will make us think differently. Cause I'm sure you've had it when you're in that negative mindset. You know you're in the mindset, but it's like, how do you get out of it? You need a pattern interrupt. You need something to shake up your world. So, um, like for me, you know, maybe it's art, maybe it's you know something else. But like, I'll do. I love movies, so I'll watch movies. Or um, it's it's also a resilience. Yes. I think that's another thing mm -hmm. um, that I learned because it's funny because I I did hypnotherapy for a long time. And then I was like, oh, I'm only going to do coaching. And I remember telling my mentor, I, I had a client in Orange County and it was just a mess. And I'm like, you know what? I'm done with hypnotherapy. I'm only doing coaching. Send him this long email like this is just crap, blah, blah, blah. And he sent back, LOL. And I'm like, that, that's not helping me. That is, <laughs> what is that? That is horrible. And, and he's like, it's the same thing. It's just the label you're giving it. He's like, you're not going to get rid of all the techniques of being you. You're just going to change the way you tell them what you do. I'm like, oh, yeah, I guess, I guess so. Like, and to me, that was a magical. Yeah, that was an insight for me. I was like, oh, I'll just change my label. So then I went by a coach. So it was just coaching. And then and then I got a bunch of magic gigs in, in one of the holiday seasons. And like, I didn't want to do the holiday gigs. So I threw out a huge price and people are like, yeah, fine. Okay. I'm like, how come there's no resistance there? And like, so I started playing with all of them. And to me, that resilience of this didn't work out the way it should have. This didn't work out the way it should have. This is coming out of nowhere. And then it dawned on me, what if I were to just put it all together? If I took the best of everything and just like the greatest hits and put it all together. And, and so I was actually, it was, I think when Tony Robbins, I am not your guru came out. I don't know if you've seen that on Netflix. I haven't yet. Um, I haven't. It is fantastic. There is a moment at the beginning where he's kind of in the beginning where he says, when you realize that life happens for you and not to you game over all your problems, all everything else just shuts down. And I was like, oh, nice. really? And then, and I remember pausing the movie and sitting with that for like, 15, 20 minutes going, how can all the things that I thought just sucked over the years, being an entrepreneur, the bad mindsets, all that stuff. And then now it's like, that's the message I'm trying to get out. And it took me going through that to realize now I have the experience to talk about it. So I think that was a huge turning point for me in, in, in a lesson in resilience, where I think we're a lot more resilient than we think we are, than we give ourselves credit for it's just tough for us to see. It's, yeah. it's you know, it's, um, well, I'm sure there's the been weed, times. It's like when you're in that thick of the weeds, it's, it's, it's you, you've, you just don't see it. You can't see it until you have someone like you or, you know, until something disrupts that, right? Like you, 
Yeah. You're, you basically you're a disruptor. You just want to be able to that that's what you do. You 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 help people be able to pull them out from those weeds and be like, "Oh, there's air. There is a lot more clarity and nothing was wrong." Yeah. You know, it's like but yeah, I I I think for me um for, for me when I when I this is when you're talking about what got you out of that rut and and I you know for me it was honestly creating this show like I it was a matter yeah. of the only reason I did this is because I was like I, I I feel like I wasn't challenging myself I wasn't pushing myself I was doing videos for everyone right but I wasn't doing mm -hmm. anything for me and I also felt like maybe there is this message this story that I could get out and but but no one wants to hear it well th then again it's like wait a second instead of so, you know kind of put blame on the you know why is no one listening to me type of thing it's like wait how about i just do my own thing and 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 create my yeah. own show and bring in people that i know that are honestly have been been influential with me and my career and 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 uh you know just it'll be a great time it was just be some it's something that that was a challenge for me and so yeah. that's the reason i created this and the next thing you know Right. More stories came more, uh, more I, ideas, again, new, all more that. ideas and new clients that I've never even would have ever met, ever imagined come. But it's just by doing and 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 taking that action is where when when I'm in action, when I'm not like I'm talking about, you know, not doing anything in your life. Right. Like like, mm -hmm. like obviously you got to have your moment of of peacefulness and, and thoughtfulness and kind of get away yeah. with everything. But uh, that moment where you're just not taking action, you're in action. That's where I get depressed. That's where I get, that's where I go down that yeah. deep, dark rabbit tunnel and, and it's hard to come out of it. And so, you know, I, I just, I think with, with what's, what, what I'm impressed with is like using that knowledge that you have or using that, that pers the different perspectives of the creativeness is like now it's challenging me to like what yeah. other avenues can I go down? You know, like it's, it's, it's exciting and it's, it's just up uplifting. And I think it's amazing. So, but. Yeah, and um, there's so, I, I forget who said this. I heard it from Kyle Cease, but I forget who he quoted, but it was kind of like, how irreplaceable are you? And, and once you realize if, if you're irreplaceable, then, I mean, if, if no one can fill your shoes in being you, then I think you're on the right path. So it was kind of a matter of how can I put my own self and how can I put my own self and story into it and being the best version of myself that will kind of lift up others and they can learn from it as well. And you're kind of in service, like indirectly. I think like a lot of times people try to be inspired, but I don't know if like if I try to inspire you, it's I think I'm probably gonna fail. The best thing I can yeah. do is be the best version of myself. So, yes. And then inspiration is the like the reaction to it. Exactly. Um so when you try to become the best version of yourself, I think that's when it start people like kind of you get offers from out of nowhere and, and it's crazy. And that's where I think a lot of people because let's face it, especially in this in today's environment of coaches right yeah they're doing it wrong because they're going out there trying to think that, that you know like you said they think they have this mindset that they want to they're, they're trying to inspire other people but yeah. they never do anything for themselves or they don't try to be the best of themselves they don't create anything they don't they just want to be your coach but like yeah. you said that that's where the failure comes and so I think that's where a lot of the coaches are dropping the ball is that by being the better version of you, you're just going to, people are going to gravitate to that. People don't want that. Yeah. You know, I mean, yep. and, and for me, like one of the big things last summer, when I went through this kind of like dark period, I remember thinking if I can turn this situation around, more people will learn from that than me trying to be Tony the tiger and keep them pumped up all the time. They'll learn more from an authentic thing that I went through than trying to be like, you know, like Tony Robbins or whatever. Um, I mean, yeah. you can't be Tony Robbins. I love it. I love his stuff, but like, 
sometimes I'd rather read his books than yeah. or watch That's his videos because it's like I can't take that high level all the time because no, well, maybe him, but nobody else lives like that. Yeah. So to me, it's great moderation. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you mentioned like, like so I, I know we kind of talked a little bit about it, but, but, but that state that you're in, right? And this is so uh-huh. interesting because like one of my clients, his name is David Bear. He's a, he's another type um, Tony Robbins esque, you know, mindset mastery. He does business life and, and, uh, yeah. and, and, and also, uh, you know, your mind and, and he, it's goes parallels exactly what you're talking about. We're in, we're basically always going to be in two or we're always in a, some state. There's, there's only two states, suffering state and a beautiful state, you know, and it's, yeah. it's just a matter of like, well, if the suffer state is just something that we think we're just creating, you know, it's like, how do we just switch it to our beautiful state? Like there's, there's a reason, you know? Um, mm-hmm. so that, that's really, it, where was I going with this? <laughs> I had a mind. I had a. I had a. I had a direction on this, and I, I forgot where I was going with this. But um, yeah, never mind. I had a question. Uh, well, but. <laughs> well, I get that asked a lot. Where people say, "So how? If you know you're in like a negative mindset, how do you switch it? What can you do to get out of it?" Yes, and that's where I was going. To going is like, how did you? What did you do to get yourself out of that suffering state and into where you're at now in that beautiful state? Yeah, there is. Um, yeah, one of the biggest things is um, Kyle Cease, um, last name C E A S E, uh, got a ton of stuff on YouTube. He's great. Um, he was a stand up comedian and then created transformation and comedy together, which is kind of where I got the idea of mindsets and magic and combining them. Um, and one of the things was he learned from Michael Beckwith if, you know, if you're in that negative spot, you're in that negative headspace. And, and you just you just know that you're 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 consciously aware that you're in it. Um, trying to kind of falsify getting out of it. There's a lot of fake ways to to do it. Um, gratitude is one way to actually like authentically get out of it. Find out what you're happy and gra- you know what you have gratitude for, um, and that'll actually start to shift some things. But one of the big things that he said in an, in a YouTube clip um, that I watched of his was. The, again, Michael Beckwith said was, um, and I'm paraphrasing this because I wasn't like totally like conscious yeah. when I heard it, but um, uh, it was more about like, what is trying to emerge out of you that it's making you a version of yourself that you've never been before? What is like the negative thing? What is, it, it means that you're in new territory if you're feeling negative. There's something that's uncertain. You're in a land of uncertainty. You're in some some space that you just haven't been before, which is why it's kind of uncomfortable. And it's kind of changing your foresight to where it's like more narrow minded. And what is trying to emerge out of you that you've never been before? So for me, being in kind of that dark, dark space, I was like, like, what is, what am I trying to do? And then it was, it just hit me one day. Um, it was like a long weekend that I just kind of hung low. Cause I'm like, I need to sit through this as opposed to trying to fight it. And I just kind of just hung around, ran a couple errands, did like was very low key. And then it dawned on me. It's like, I want to create something that no one has seen before, which is the combining mindset and magic stuff that because no one's seen it before, I thought that it couldn't exist. And I'm like, once I realized all of this is new, yeah. why am I not excited about it? And it, it's like, because I've never seen it before, that's what was put me in a negative mind state. So I was like, no, like now that I realize, holy, holy crap, like no one's done this. It's I have free range of doing whatever I want. And when I put my personality into it, when I put my artistic ability into it, then there's no competition. And I don't mean that from like an egotistical place. I mean, no. even if I do the same magic tricks as someone else, they're not me and I'm not them. So there's no competition. So they either want me to perform it or they want someone else to. Like, that's fine. But it eliminated so much stuff when I was realizing it's becoming the better version of yourself and you're creating something like for me, it was just creating something that I'd never seen. That's why I had so many doubts and so many other things, because I don't know if anyone's going to buy it or is the company really going to bring in a magician to talk about mindset stuff and all that. And then once I started just playing with it and just creating, that's when I was like, Oh my God, I'm onto something totally different. Wow. And then I started doing magic, um, bringing the artwork into it because a lot of mentalists will do like a mind reading thing mm-hmm. and they have it like written out at the end and it's like written out in a letter or something like that 
And to me, I'm like, everyone does that. We think in images. And since we think in images and pictures, why don't I draw what people are thinking? Because I haven't really seen that. And then I saw like the paint jam guys who, who do all the hand painting and it's upside yeah. down and they spin it around. I'm like, what if I was to draw something upside down? They don't know what it is. And then that's a revelation. And then it's like, so all these ideas just started coming through. And it's like, now I'm creating something that I'm so proud of. I'm reacting differently with people because I'm so excited about what I'm creating. It took me to like, not just a better mindset, but higher than I thought it could be to where I'm like, this is awesome. I'm totally excited about it. I'm probably not going to shut up about it. And then people are like, okay, just calm down. Like, um, there'll always be haters that try to dampen you. And they're like, always, but, like, always, but for always. me, when you get to that space of creating it, of, of creating something, and it could be, you can be an interior designer, but you have a certain thing that only you do. Great. The world needs that. The world needs more variety. The world yeah. needs all that kind of stuff. And then it putting yourself into what you do, like for you, the storytelling, telling stories the way you do that no one else can, that is going to make you feel like all the other competition is gone because people are hiring you for your perspective. And to me, that's, they're hiring you for you. Yeah, you do video and tell stories, but yeah. like they're really hiring you to do you, to be you. And what greater compliment is someone going like, I just want to create something with him. I just want to spend more time around this person and see how they see the world. Then to me, like that, to me, that's like the ultimate thing. So it took being in that negative spot of not knowing what the hell I was going to do to come out of that. And, um, and it was also, what would it take for me to be in a good mood? Well, I'd be able to do whatever the hell I want. Yeah. And then that's where this started coming out. I'm like, <laughs> now I'm doing whatever the hell I want. And it wasn't on career day and everyone else is kind of like, I don't know exactly how to describe what you do because it's so different <laughs> and so weird. And so then I got another stumbling block months later, like around the holiday times uh, a couple months ago, people were like, I don't know how to describe what you do to people. Like you just mess with their heads. I'm like, well, it's a little more than that. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. And so now it's like, now I need to create YouTube videos to to show people what I do. So there's an evolution there, but it's all progressive and it's all like, there's momentum with it. Yep. Um, but really it comes down to interjecting who you really are into your work. Cause that's going to eliminate a lot of the negative stuff because no one can be you like you. Exactly. Exactly. And I think, you know, as, as we wrap this up, I, I mean, I'm a, such a huge fan of you, Luke. It's, uh, it's, Thank you. Thank it's you. absolutely, uh, exactly what, honestly, what I now and I needed right now, but, uh, but I think it's just, it's going to help out so many people. Um, but you kind of mentioned you, you started your own YouTube channel so people could look for you. Like, like tell me a little yeah. bit about how you use video to get your message out. This is actually last week. I was sitting down with a coach, um, and, and really kind of, I think once you get into that space where you're creating the best version of you and, and injecting that into your work, um, the connections you make because you're being so authentic as yourself are the, like the connections are just through the roof. So last week I was having a coaching session with the coach. Um, I really admire his work for the past few years and I just totally lost my train of thought. Um, the, uh, uh, YouTube videos. Uh, oh, that's what it was. Yeah, yeah. We were talking and he's like, I'm like, I hate writing blogs. I hate doing all this stuff. Like I'm just not a writer. And he's like, no, you need to make a bunch of YouTube videos and make them short and have a magic moment or a coaching or an insight or whatever. And like, I've been thinking about that for a while. Like I even have thumbnail graphics and stuff made and all <laughs> And I just haven't done it. And he's like, no, you gotta do it. Like, but having, hearing that from someone else, I was kind of like, oh dude, now I gotta do this. So um, it is like a shameless plug, lukebrady.com. You can see all my social and all that stuff through there. Um, and uh, yeah, so now I wanna actually create videos but I want to do it in a way that's a magic moment. And it also is engagement. I want to know what people thought of it so they can comment and kind of, I want to get a feel for what get people are taking away from it too. For the communication. Um, so it's funny because working with you like in video for like, you know, I, yeah. I worked at a TV station for 11 years and it's like, someone goes, Oh, you should do video. And I'm like, I oh, should yeah. like, <laughs> wh how did it take me 15 years to realize that? Like, <laughs> it's almost kind of like embarrassing, but, you know, you hear it at the right time from the right person. You're just like, oh, yeah. there it is. Exactly. Exactly. So I'll say that again. LukeBrady.com. Okay. 
And yep. then you have all your social media links right there. I know that. Um, yeah. Seriously, guys, follow Luke Brady. He has tons already of content on his YouTube channel. I, I've been watching it. I'm a huge fan. Um, matter of fact, I got to witness his magic tricks firsthand. Um, yeah. I'll never forget. <laughs> I'll never forget this is that, and this is the story that we'll, we'll kind of end this on, but I'll never forget when we went out. So he used to do a lot of stuff over. I remember at fat Tuesdays. Is that what it was? Fat Tuesdays? Oh yeah. yeah. On Mill Avenue. Yeah, Mill, yeah. On Mill <laughs> Avenue. And so we got done with a uh, uh, 10 o'clock show. Um, and they, everyone always goes out after that. And I went out with these guys and we're just, we're just hanging. And all of a sudden Luke will pull out a wallet and this, this thing is on fire. It, uh, like he just pulls in the fire <laughs> and then I tell you what about attention man that was an attention grammar all the all, all ladies started like just conforming it around us and I'm like man this guy's got the best icebreakers of all time like I just couldn't believe it um I'm always I'm always impressed and but uh Luke just thank you so much for uh joining i do need to have yeah. you back on a, on this show again and we'll we'll talk a little bit more more you know on the uh entrepreneurial side and your business and yeah yeah i'd love to uh dive deeper in that but uh thank you again man yeah and actually i would love to come out there and do some we can do some videos of magic um yes. for your audience and stuff too so let's do um, it yes yeah let's, let's do make it, it happen. And i'll be out there in san diego at the end of, at the end of the month so i'll come and Come in and visit yeah. me. So yeah, yeah, we can shoot some teasers. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Excellent. All right, brother. Hey, thank you again. Hey, thank you thank guys. You. Um, and uh, we'll be right back. Talk to you later. That was amazing. I, Luke, I just want to say thank you for coming on the show. Thank you guys for tuning in, and also thank you for your guys's continued viewership. Uh, one of the best things that uh, that I can ask or the uh, that you guys could do for me is hit the subscribe button on your YouTube channel. Make sure that you get receive the notifications every time I do release a show. Like I said, I plan on still releasing two to three shows a month, bring on some powerful guests, some very influential guests, um, and bring just tons of knowledge for you um, and that you could use in your everyday life, within your business, within um your personal relationships, whatever the case may be, but it's an emphasis on being able to create and how to use video for your business. So uh, thank you again. Hope you guys enjoy the show and uh, we'll see you in the next episode. Talk to you guys soon. Later. Bye.